Welcome to Mastering Merch Design Episode 2. In this episode, we're taking two assets from Envato Elements and turning them into this final composition. And what I'm about to teach you can be applied to any other design that you choose to create on your own. And don't forget, you could go to MerchDesignAcademy.com and join my one-on-one -on -one courses where I teach you literally everything I know about merch design. Really cool. But with that out of the way, let's get started. And um, we're going to get right into it unscripted. So I'm just going to go for it and hope for the best. But uh, what I do is I always start off on Envato Elements. Now, I really like Envato Elements um, and they uh, do give me an affiliate commission. So if you guys do sign up right now, I do get some kickback from that, but they're not paying me to say anything. So I use them all the time because they have a simple licensing. Uh, you know, the way their licensing works is basically you pay for a subscription and everything's included under that license and you can just basically do a bunch of different projects under that one license. So I've already downloaded a few elements, so I'm going to go grab them. So we're using the same exact elements. So this is one of the ones that I use. It's a red roses and a vase. That was a really cool one. And I think I have some barbed wire as well. Let's grab these red roses and a vase. Now their 3D section is so cool because you can literally rotate it any way you want. So I'm going to rotate it about right here, download that as a PSD, and I'm going to put it under Merch Design Academy. Look at that right there. So the license will be under this project. Let's go up to File, New, and then under File, New, let's go ahead and select under Saved. I have a preset for my Merch Design templates. Let's actually go 16 by 18 on this one. I'm going to go a little wider on purpose, and then 18 is fine. 300 DPI is like super important because when you're going to print something, you want that resolution to be high. If it was 72, that'd be more for display purposes online, like Instagram or or maybe like a thumbnail or something like that. So you just gotta be careful when setting the resolution. You want that to be 300. And then you could just press uh, create there and then you're good to go. So now we have our artboard set up, our document set up properly, and we could start bringing in our elements. So I'm gonna go to my downloads folder real quick and let's go ahead and just open up all these different assets that we have, including the barbed wire. And that's a PNG, so I could just drag that into Photoshop have that open up. I meant to download that as a, uh, a Photoshop file, but it's totally fine. Let's open up the rose. Thinking about doing like a sleeve print, which is why I downloaded two different roses, because I was thinking this one could be on the sleeve, but we'll see. I don't know where the, the wind will take us in this one. Now we need to go to our new document and just start basically dragging our assets in. So let's take these roses without the shadows. We could delete the shadows. We don't need the background. We honestly just want to work with the subject, which is flat. And if I wanted to take this further, I could just name the subject roses, so I know. And let's just bring that into our new document, which is untitled right now. And a fun little tip is if you wanted to actually title your document, you can just name this bundle, or whatever you want, obviously, but I could just name this roses tutorial, so I know where it is. So now on the top, it's gonna have that exact name, so it's easier to keep track of. Pressing Command T or Control T if you're on a PC, that's gonna bring up your transform box. And from here, I can go to the top and you're gonna see this little chain on the very top left. Uh, you're gonna see a W and an H. Now you can, you can literally click and drag and it's going to resize it for you. So now we have the roses where they need to be. And um, again, that was Command T, Control T to transform. You could do that with anything. You could also just like take these little, you know, anchor points on each corner or in the center and drag them down. As long as that chain is checked, it's going to do it proportionally. That way when I'm resizing my images, they're just so much easier to work with. But yeah, now I'm gonna press Command A and then um, just basically recenter my, my uh, object here to the artboard using the alignment options that appear on the very top. Now, if you press Command A and you don't see these, just press V on your keyboard and it will pop these up. So anyway, I'm kind of going through all these tips quick because those aren't as important as everything else I'm about to teach you. Um, but yeah, now what I wanna do is uh, probably work with my barbed wire because that's pretty damn important to the aesthetic of this design. Without the barbed wire, it just looks like a bouquet of flowers, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and take these, this barbed wire, drag it into place. The problem with this being completely unscripted is I'm just like rambling, so I apologize, but uh, that's how it's gonna go probably. So prepare yourself. <laughs> and let's name this wire so we know where it is. And I'm not trying to like reinvent the wheel here. I just wanna try to figure out like, how can I intertwine this with the roses, right? Like how is that gonna look? So what I typically do is I duplicate it a bunch of times so I have extra copies and that's simply so they're not all messed up. In case I do mess up, I wanna have backups. 
and then I just kind of resize it so I can kind of start placing it. Now, there's a couple things we could do here. We can warp this. So I definitely wouldn't warp it. Uh, what I would do instead is do a puppet warp. And before I even do that though, I wanna go to my layer that says wire and I wanna right click and convert it to a smart object. And now we could go up to edit and let's go to puppet warp. And this is going to add like this weird uh, like pattern, almost like a wireframe literally around your, your design or your element, your object, your layer, whatever you want to call it. And then you can add these anchor points, which is great because now we can actually kind of choose where we want this warp to be. And it just allows us to really fine tune our warp and instead of doing it just messy, right? We can now take this and bring it anywhere we want with these anchor points, which is clutch, honestly, because it just makes it look so much more realistic. So I can bring that to like right here and we could literally intertwine this anywhere we want. So maybe I want this one to be, I don't know, right here. That's fine. This one's probably going to go under this rose, this rose petal right here. So we could go about right here. This is going to go under. This part will go under too, maybe. And it will kind of come out this end. That's fine. And then this side, we also do need to mess with. So I'm going to take this and bring it like so. It does take a little finessing, but once you get it, it's pretty cool. So that will go around and to the back as well. So you can see how Puppet Warp is just super, super clutch. So that one is fine, we can apply that. And look how much better that bend looks versus trying to warp it. And I didn't do that in the original design to be honest with you guys, so I should have, but I was being lazy. So yeah, don't be lazy like me. So now we can kind of resize this one as well. Again, repeat the process, that's all you're doing. Repeating the process over and over again until you get something that you are completely happy with. Now that we applied our puppet warps, we're good to go. We can start actually masking out certain parts of the wire to make it look like it's going behind, intertwining in between the roses and all that good stuff. So this is the fun part. Now, if we want to clean up our layers, we can literally just hold in shift, select the very top wire, which is wire copy two. And then uh, while holding and shift, select the, the first one and then just press command or control G if you're on a PC. And that will, you know, obviously group them together and we can name these wires. And then from here, we can access that group at any time, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to hide the ones that I don't want to work with yet. And we're just going to focus on one at a time. So what I want to do is I actually want to add a layer mask to the actual layer, not the smart filter. The smart filter already has a layer mask applied. We don't need that. I just want to mask the actual layer. So where it says wire, there should be a white box right there if you did it correctly. From here, what I could do is just zoom in and literally just paint away with a hard round brush the parts that I want to hide behind the rows. Now, there's more effective ways of doing it, but I found this is like to be the quick and dirty way of doing it. And I think it's good for beginners. So that's why I do it this way. If you did it the other way, which would like, you know, if you take the rose and put it above everything, then you have issues with the leaves and stuff. And it just, it's going to be, uh, it's going to create problems, trust me, because then you're going to have the leaves getting in the way, if that makes sense. So I do it this way and it works for me and I like it. So I'm going to leave this one right here at the very bottom and just focus on the middle section here. So again, I just want to follow the contour of the rose itself. And again, we're using a layer mask. So black deletes, white adds. So you can literally get in here and uh, fine tune it as you go. If you wanted to, you can always use like a soft round brush. That's actually fine. Um, and you know, I find it works pretty good, but the only problem with the soft round brush is sometimes the edges are too soft and it creates issues later on. So I usually use a hard, hard round brush. That way the pixels are just perfect. So now we're creating this illusion that this barbed wire is intertwining. And I love that. It just looks super cool when everything's said and done. So that looks nice. Now we could actually turn on our other one and work on this one. So we're just doing one at a time here. So the hard part's pretty much done. Just getting those to look like they actually intermingle with the rose petals is like literally the hardest part. If we wanted to, at this point, we could add some, you know, layers to add shadows, which I'm gonna try to do real quick. Um, let's focus on one layer at a time again. So I already have this layer right here, uh, which is like the last one on the very top. Uh, selected and what I could do is just literally create a layer above it and let's take a soft round brush So under your brush menu, let's just select a soft brush and let's make sure the flow is at like 35% That's fine. And let's just resize it a little bit and with black selected Let's just start painting in some shadows. So that's pretty much it We're brushing in some shadows and that's just gonna create that illusion that it is going behind And it just it's gonna give it that realistic look and we can apply this to any other layer 
basically that's going under anything. You know, although I don't bring a lot of realism into my work, um, you know, I, I don't focus on the realistic part of things, but it does, I, I found that it does help to go the extra mile. The shadows are all done, and um, if I hide them, you can kind of see like what parts are being affected. It's kind of hard to see on your screen probably, but uh, trust me, it makes a huge difference. So we're good with those. Now we can actually hide that group for now, just toggle it off, or not toggle it off, sorry, uh, close the group, I should say. You just click that little arrow next to the group, and it's going to uh, toggle it. So it just makes the layers palette a little smaller so you can actually see your roses now. Now if we hide this layer, we don't really need it right now. We can start focusing on the, the rose petals, which is what we want because we want to start isolating some of these colors. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. And to duplicate what I'm doing is I'm actually just holding an option or alt if you're on a PC and clicking down and letting go. You can also just press command or control J on your keyboard and that will also duplicate it. So whatever way you want to do it, that's completely up to you. We need three copies actually. So one of these are going to be the reds. So this can be red and this could be green. So we're gonna isolate these colors is what we're doing. So what I wanna do first though, is I wanna go up to image, uh, adjustments, and let's go hue and saturation, and let's just raise the saturation up a lot. We want these to be very vibrant, and we can even take the lightness up to like eight. So I wanna separate these colors, and in order to do that, I wanna to try to get rid of all these shadows. I just want the color. I'm not worried about the shadows yet because we're gonna bring those back later. So um, that's what this third copy is for. We can apply that same adjustment to the greens as well. So if I hide this layer, which is red, I can apply that same adjustment to the green. And these are smart objects. So those adjustments are being um, added as smart filters because this is, a, this is not a raster layer. Now, if this was a raster layer and I were to add like a hue and saturation adjustment, it's not going to stack like it would um, on a... Uh, a smart object. So as you can see, if I raise the, the saturation, press OK, it's just baked in now. There's no way of altering it or changing it. So I don't like to work that way, which is why you see me working with smart objects. So yeah, we're done with the red pretty much. If we wanted to, we can actually crank it up even a little bit more, make it more vibrant. And you can even go into like the camera raw filter, honestly, honestly, and get rid of those shadows even more. So we can raise the shadows up under camera raw filter and the highlights, basically trying to get rid of the contrast as much as possible and those shadows can go all the way up. We can even raise the blacks up. We're just trying to isolate the red and that's it. If you wanted to, you can rasterize this layer and we could go up to select color range and we can literally just select the red. And as you can see, it's gonna do a pretty damn good job of doing that, but you wanna try to um, isolate the red as much as possible and not get any green in there because we're gonna put that on a different layer. So, and then I think this is gonna look pretty good. So I'm gonna press okay on this. And as you can see, I just have the red and I can just add a layer mask and it should work. Now, in a perfect world, if I were to duplicate this right now and invert the mask, it should just get the green and it does a pretty good job as you can see. So now if I hide both, you can see that I have just the green. On the green layer, you will notice there is some red though. So I don't like doing it this way. So I'm gonna delete that layer. But we do have the red now isolated. I could go to the green layer, rasterize this actually. On the green layer, I'm actually gonna go to a camera raw filter adjustment too. And I'm just going to raise the or lower the contrast and raise the highlights and then raise the shadows up and all that stuff just to isolate that color. And we can even raise the saturation if we wanted to because we can change the colors later on. So I'm not too worried about it. If we wanted to take it a step further, you can go to color mixer and lower the saturation of every other color but green. Now the green is showing, which is what we wanted. So press OK. So that's another way I would do it. And then from here, we can go up to or rasterize the layer first. And then we can go up to select once we rasterize that layer like we did before and go color range and just select the greens because this way you can really control what you're selecting. I just like it more. And now let's go back to roses for a second. And this is where we're going to actually add our filter gallery effect. So with the filter gallery effect, you want to make sure your foreground is black and your background is white. So I usually just press D on my keyboard. So let's say we have like a different color here. You can just press D on your keyboard and it will default these colors. And if you press X, you can shift the foreground and background colors. So D is your best friend and X is your best friend. So that's pretty much all you have to know. Just make sure black is your foreground and you're good to go. So from here, I'm gonna go up to camera raw filter again, and we are going to flatten this image out quite a bit because right now there's way too much, uh, there's way too much uh, darkness and we don't want that. So let's raise the, the, the exposure, lower the contrast, raise the shadows up. We can bring the highlights up just a little bit, but not too much because we want it to be kind of flat. Something like this is pretty good. You don't really need any saturation or anything like that, so we can actually lower all that. You don't need any of that. We can raise the clarity if we wanted to, even the texture, 
It's not going to hurt anything. Raise those whites up maybe just a little bit more now that I look at it. As long as it's flat, you're good to go. So that's pretty much it. Press OK. And that's pretty much our base layer. This is going to be our outline layer that's going to bring back those shadows. So now we could go up to Filter, Filter Gallery. And I already have everything kind of preset how I like it. But uh, normally, you're probably going to see nothing here. So what you want to do is just add Stamp and Grain. Stamp is going to be on top of Grain, OK? And you want to add two layers. So hit the little plus icon and then select uh, on the left here, the stamp and grain, and that's pretty much it. And then you can copy my exact settings. So under stamp, on light and darkness, I have 10. Smoothness, I have one. And then grain, I have 21 on the intensity. Contrast, I have 53. I actually want to adjust these a little bit. Something more like that. You kind of want the white to be more prominent here and just have those like shadows still showing but not as intensely because you don't want to lose color contrast or anything like that. So yeah, it should look something like this. I'm going to press OK now. That's going to be our texture and shadow layer. Now we're going to bring this layer above the color and we're going to turn the color on and you're going to notice that the color kind of disappears. Now with roses selected, that's our shadow layer. We can even name this rose shadows. We could change the blend mode to multiply. And as you can see, the color is already showing through. Alternatively, we can also do it the opposite way. We can change the color of the reds to multiply and it will do the exact same thing. So however you want to do it, that's completely up to you. But that is our finished look pretty much. That's what we're going for. To take this a step further though, if we wanted to, we can actually convert these to smart objects. So each color to smart object. Now that those are smart objects, I can go up to image adjustments, hue and saturation and change the color with the hue slider. So this is where you can really fine tune these colors and desaturate them, do whatever you gotta do, right? To make them look the way you want them. Now we have to do the same exact thing to the barbed wire. So what I wanna do is uh, convert this barbed wire layer to a smart object, just like this. Make sure black is my foreground again. And now we can actually duplicate this layer, go up to filter, filter gallery, and we're gonna apply the same exact effect to the barbed wire. So we're gonna have that stamp and grain layer. And from here, you can actually mess with the intensity of this because it kind of needs a little bit more. And there you go. And if you want to keep that same like gray look, just change the blend mode of this top layer to multiply. And there you go. And you have the same exact effect applied to the barbed wire as well. And let's go ahead and pull up some textures. And there's actually a great website that I'm going to share with you guys right now called Texture Labs. And if you guys have never been here, just trust me, go there. This guy is a beast. He's actually a YouTuber as well. So shout out to Texture Labs. There's one that's still downloading. So I'll let that download in a second. It's done. What I want to do before playing with the blend mode of all these is I want to clip them to my layers group, which is why I made those a group because I want to be able to clip everything to that one group versus having to do it to individual layers, if that makes sense. So now that all of my design layers are in a group, I can simply just clip these textures to that and it's going to hide them on the outside. So as you can see, they're not bleeding through. And if I unhide them, you can see they are. Now that that's clipped, you can see that it's already applying the texture because I have a blend mode set of multiply on this crack texture. And it already looks really freaking cool. So as you can see, it's like really easy to work with. And that's pretty much it. And if you want to stack another texture, you can. I think I actually inverted it. So if you want to invert a texture, just literally press Command or Control I on it. That inverses it. And then you have to change the blend mode to screen at that point. But look how intense it is. And if you press Command L or Control L, you can always like mess with the levels this way too. But as you can see, it still has like a lot of texture. So this works decent to kind of like dumb down the texture a little bit. You can print this on a black or white shirt if you wanted to. Let's see what it looks like on black. I actually like it on black, not gonna lie, but uh, white's pretty cool too. That's it for this episode of Mastering Merch Design with me, Charlie Pangus. This is Merch Design Academy. If you guys like this video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you guys wanna learn one-on-one -on -one with me, myself, you can go to merchdesignacademy.com and join the academy today. I'll see you guys in the next one.